I and Unku and our group will analyze drug throwing and relate it based on all three learning outcomes of this course. So, here we go. Okay, good evening everyone. Today we learn about the anatomy of the wrist. So, I will share the video so you guys will watch. I recently had uh, elective surgery on my wrist. So two of the bones in my wrist had started to separate because of a 100% tear between them. The two bones were called the scaphoid bone and the lunate bone. And together they're known as the scapholunate ligament, which joins them and gives you this wonderful mobility in your wrist. And she made it really quite clear to me that, you know, I don't take it off even when I'm sleeping. Other than to do um, the very first um, uh, physiotherapy rehab exercise I need to do, which is like a dart throwing action, which uh, research shows is the best way to start healing up after scapholunate ligament reconstruction <laughs> surgery. So Yo, Mutu! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Jocelyn. So now I'll be analyzing the projectile motion, which is the kinematic of throwing the dart. First of all, let's look at the measurements. The horizontal distance between the dart and the dart rod SX is 2.37 meter. The vertical distance between the dart and the bull's eyes SY, which we obtain by subtracting 1.7 meter by 1.73 meter, is 0 0.03 meter. The time taken for the dart to reach the dart rod is 1 second. The mass of the dart M1 is 0 0.002 kilograms, and finally the mass of the dart rod M2 is 4.54 kilograms. We assume that there is no air resistance, and the dart flight pathway is shown in Figure 2. So we have constructed a free body diagram and kinetic diagram. Before that, we have established an XY coordinate system and had determined that the direction towards the right and upwards would be positive. We let P be the center of mass of the dart. From the free body diagram, we can see that there are two forces acting on the dart during the throw. The force applied to throw the dart F1 and the weight of the dart W. From the kinetic diagram, we can see that the motion and acceleration of the dart is at which the direction of force F1 is applied. Now, we will proceed to the calculation of the initial velocity of dart during the throw, V0. Firstly, V0 is resolved into the X and Y components, which is represented by V0 X and V0 Y respectively. At X axis, we use this formula as X equals to V0 X times T plus half AX times T squared. As at the Y axis, we apply the same formula but modify the A into negative G, which is the gravitational acceleration that X downwards. We get 2.37 m per second and 4.935 m per second for V0 X and V0 Y respectively. By having these two values, we are able to obtain V0 which is 5.47 m per second by using the Pythagoras theorem and the angle of release which is 64.3 degrees by using the tangent formula. Next is the calculation of the final velocity of that right before it hits the bull's eye, V1. Similar to the calculation of V0, V1 is resolved into the X and Y components which is represented by V1X and V1Y respectively. At the x axis, we use this formula, V1x equals to V0x plus AX times T, whereas at the y axis, we use the same formula but modify the A into negative G. We get 2.37 m per second and negative 4.875 m per second for V1x and V1y respectively. By having these two values, again we obtain V1 which is 5.42 m per second by using the Pythagoras theorem and the angle of heating which is negative 64.1 degrees by using the tangent formula. So that's all from me, thank you. Now I'll pass the time to Shakika. Now we're going to look at conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy states that during the motion, the particles' kinetic and potential energy remain constant. For this to happen, kinetic energy needs to be transformed to potential energy and vice versa. To apply law of conservation of energy, we need to know some data and make assumptions. These are our assumptions. And from projectile motion, we know the initial and final velocity of the dart here. 
we can calculate initial and final total energy by using conservation of energy equation and substitute all the information we have. The answer for initial and final total energy is the same, indicates that energy is conserved in the system. As the dart hits the dartboard at an angle of theta, the velocity of dart and dartboard can be calculated from the respective x and y components. So, for the horizontal component at the x axis, uh, two values are obtained, which is for the velocity of dart right before hitting the bullseye and also velocity of dartboard. So, similarly, for the vertical component, it's also the velocity of dartboard right before hitting the bullseye and also the velocity of the dartboard. So, in this case, the velocity of the dartboard both at the horizontal and vertical component is at 0 meter per second because it is at rest. And these values obtained from the previous calculations can be used in calculating the conservation of momentum. So, in this case, as you can see on the right side, the calculation uh, consists of two parts, which is on the top for the horizontal component and for the below part is for the vertical component and on the left consisting of VA is, is of the initial velocity obtained from previous calculations and now we are to find the final velocity of both the horizontal and vertical components. The final velocity of the horizontal component would be labeled as Vx which is 0 0.0104 meter per second and also the vertical component would, for the velocity would be negative 0 0.0214 meter per second. And next would be the average velocity. So once obtained for the horizontal component and vertical component of uh, final velocity, its uh, average velocity can be obtained through this calculation and followed by um, the angle of collision uh, of the dart onto the bullseye of dartboard can be calculated as well. To prove that the collision is inelastic, the coefficient of restitution, which is E, can be calculated the value of zero in this calculation here indicates that the collision between the dart and the dartboard is an inelastic collision, which is also known as plastic collision. So we are able to analyze the impact by using the principle of impulse and momentum. So at the horizontal component, um, by using the formula of the principle of impulse and momentum, we are able to obtain the impulsive force in terms of T. And also for the vertical component, similarly, we are able to obtain the impulsive force in terms of T as well. And then by equating both equations, we are able to obtain the time of impact, which is 0 0.46 millisecond. And also the impulsive force is obtained, which is negative 235 Newton. The negative sign at the impulsive force indicates that the force is acting in the opposite direction of motion of the dart upon its impact with the dartboard. Um, this occurs due to the force acting by the dartboard against the dart upon collision is against the direction of momentum. When the dart is suspended on the bullseye of the dartboard, after the plastic collision, there is a very small angular displacement, theta 3, which can be seen here, in the plane of the dartboard. Therefore, the natural uh, period of vibration is then calculated. So, this is uh, useful for to calculate the vibration of the dartboard. So, the assumptions made here would be for the angular displacement of the dartboard, uh, which on the on his plane, which is 5 degrees and also the rotational stiffness of the brass magnetic guard and also the center of the dartboard is represented by O at the bullseye and the radius of the dartboard is uh, calculated using this formula so next we will be looking at the moment of inertia of the dartboard so the moment of inertia can be calculated using half mr square and um, its mass and radius which has been calculated initially is uh, put into place to obtain the moment of inertia followed by the natural frequency of the vibrating dartboard is also calculated so the k value was obtained previously and also the moment of inertia that was uh, obtained initially and finally for the natural period of vibration of the dartboard is obtained using this formula to get the period which is 0 0.3 seconds <laughs> The notifications are all around us. Our group has successfully relayed one of them, which is the throwing, with all the learning outcomes of this course. Also, our group has relayed dart throwing with its application in biomedical field, such as its hand motion in assisting rehab for post-surgery patients, 
and for biomedical engineers in gathering data for the designing of upper processes. That's all from our group. Thank you.